This time we'll be talking about Lake Como. Such an iconic destination. I will tell you where Lake Como is. He had only one like wish and that would be like the Star Wars villa because he loved Star Wars. So hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Julius. Hi, I'm Sophie. And we are bringing you another part of our podcast. This time we'll be talking about Lake Como and our wedding experience. And we just want to remind you that we hope that this podcast will be informative and interesting both for the wedding professionals such as us photographers and videographers and also future, current or even past wedding couples. Of course, yeah, because we want to bring information to people who work in this business and people to people who we serve. Right? Exactly. So they can see the other side of the work in case they're interested. Exactly. It's behind the scenes. A little bit. See how it works, what we need to kind of go through, prepare. Mm -hmm. So maybe they will understand us yeah. better. And yeah. yeah. And even maybe we can inspire some people to actually get into the wedding production. Yeah, of course, that would be that would be amazing yeah. because I think that's that's the goal to show also how to possibly start especially today we're talking that's our fifth podcast actually yeah. and we're talking talking about Lake Como because it's a wedding destination for us because we're based in Prague how would you start about Lake Como well I think Lake Como is such an iconic destination right a lot of couples are pre-booking um, even the smallest venues years ahead. Yeah. Uh, it's an expensive destination, especially for the US um, couples because it's a longer journey than for the European. We also know that a lot of Australians come in. So I think we can start with just um, saying, where is Lake Como? Mm -hmm. Why is it so famous? That's a good idea. You know, and now uh, like what is something that's... So I will tell you where Lake Como is. I'm sure it's in Italy. <laughs> no, it's one point to you. <laughs> actually, in northern Italy, it's one of the lakes there, and it's one of the nicest lakes, I would say. And it's famous. Why is it famous? Do you know? It's famous, I think, because of a famous movie production. Yeah. <laughs> actually, multiple that was there. Of course, of course, it's famous also because there are a lot of uh, historical villas yes. and a little bit of castle, and also the the, and it's the really itself. picturesque area, right? It is. It's close to Switzerland, so you have this beautiful. It's quite big lake, yeah, yeah. And surrounded long. by really tall and mountains. really long, right? Like, and it's really long, and uh, there are settlements or little villages on the either side of the lake. So it's really beautiful, and it's really close to Milan. So. You know, the fashion destination and capital of Europe, of, so excuse me, Paris and Milan. Uh, so, of course, being so close to Milan, which has a huge, I think it has two airports, I'm not sure, but at least like it's easily accessible for um, anybody traveling. And then what is it like one hour car ride uh, from Milan? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, one, one hour. Yeah. So it's not just easily accessible by car. Uh, but also by, uh, I think there are a lot of buses and even trains going. We introduced where the Lake Como is and now we could talk about like how, how did we manage? How did we score this wedding? Do you remember? You should say because that, that came from you actually. Well, yeah, as we, as we talked about it already before, we comment on the f various Facebook groups, right? And we're just trying to comment on the posts of possible brides or potential brides for us, but absolutely future brides because they're getting married. They just chose the, the destination. And yeah, so I think I just commented and one of the wedding organizers actually, actually reached out and she, she was organizing like last minute, I think, w wedding and she managed to score Lake Como and particularly it was the Villa del Balbianello. Bal Balbianello? Balbianello, I think, yeah. And um, that's uh, one of the most famous villas there's, there because there's no access by road, only by boat. And actually James Bond and Star Wars was shot there. So it's really seeked, seeked 
out destination or venue for couples to get married and also for tourists like it's packed and you you usually rent it out for one hour or a few hours but then it's also packed with tourists especially the balcony area where you get married and overlook the lake como but yeah so i think i commented on a post then she got in touch with me the organizer and then we just try to communicate the details i'm not sure if we had a call but we exchanged many emails and actually she gave me a contact no actually this was a little bit complicated because mm -hmm. what i remember that she didn't get me any contact person's details but we we signed a contract right so before you do any work like this especially wedding destinations you want to have a contract signed so you know it's valid it will take place it's not just random pe person making fun of you booking you for non-existent wedding which can which can happen too of course so be careful about that but we signed the papers and then it was really quiet it was like five months before the wedding it was really quiet and nothing was really going on no communication back and forth so i tried i started to be a little bit skeptical and i tried to search for the person for the bride actually because i've never been in touch with her and so i was searching and then i found some name signed on the contract and it was actually mother of the bride a little bit of stock <laughs> but i had to you know because she was not communicating and now i know why because she was pregnant and she was organizing who, who this was wedding pregnant? the organizer the wedding organizer she was pregnant so she was busy in her own personal life so not no hard feelings she's otherwise great and we've been in touch after the wedding too but yeah it was a little bit complicated so i searched for the name which I, then i found out was the bride's mother and she was super nice and she actually confirmed for everything for me so yeah we confirmed that it's taking place and they paid also the deposit so that also assured me that it will take place, you know? And yeah, so that's how we basically scored it. Well, I think like we should also clarify that was it just the photos, videos, like what was hired? Yeah. Like what did they hire? They had their own photographers. So they were kind of last minute looking for a videographer. So yeah, as we talked in previous podcasts, like is photo or video better so and like for what is better or what is more important right we talked about it in the previous podcast like for me it's always the video like I, I would rather want to have video than photo but this was again the case that the video was just neglected and it was just like I, I would assume last minute decision that hey we would like a video from from the wedding so that's why it was like last minute they had their own photographer i don't know how they got her it was jessica jessica hi <laughs> we will tag her in the video below because she does great pictures right and they were really pretty and i know she's a full-time photographer and mainly in florida right yeah so the couple was actually from the u.s right you didn't mention oh yeah the couple was from the u.s they were super nice really nice couple yeah. but it was funny we never met them until then right not even a video call because we we were through the wedding organizer organized kind of but yeah so they were americans they were super nice and jessica was they they were they are based in florida and Jessica was based in Florida too, I think. And that's how I think they got in touch. And that's that's why they saw it. Uh, last minute videographer. Um, okay, so I do have a question. So you touched about the like a time delay topic. So so as a recap, you po uh, you saw a post that uh, there was a couple looking for a videographer at Lake Como, uh, and then uh, the coordinator was the author of the post, right? So then you con uh, you got in touch, 
and she was like that's great they like you here's the um, the the contract i will send it to you through email and then as you said it was somewhere in summer oh uh, when it happened and yeah. then the the wedding was in i think september or october october yeah, yeah october in, yeah, like, yeah late yeah and that's why they had actually free spot there okay so then you had this five or four months of information vacuum so uh, how often does that happen as a, a videographer or like what went through you your mind how, like what was the whole ordeal well i was still hoping it's not fake right and like it will take place so from the first arrangements i already put it in my calendar and i was counting with it and later on when we signed the contract and got the deposit then i was like sure surely counting on it that it will take place so <clears throat> i started booking uh, looking for booking of accommodation car and actually planned the trip and uh, i think until then, I just didn't really think about it, you know, like I was considering it done and yeah, I think I just managed to arrive, That, but I'm skipping already. Like when we arrived there, that was the first time we met the bride and it was like kind of weird because we didn't know each other, right? But like we quickly, quickly communicated and there was actually bad luck for them because they had arranged boat transport to the island for the wedding and it didn't work out as it was supposed to. So we were there and we got into it and trying to help them to solve the situation and calm down the bride because she was super nice and she was stressed out. But I think we managed really well. But yeah, I had a vacuum of information, but I still counted with it. So you received the deposit after like quite some time yeah 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 and i had to keep communicating with the with the coordinator but she was not responsive so then mother of the bride really like replied and confirmed everything yeah i think it just goes to say that uh we try to take as much distance as possible while the couple is booking or organizing the wedding right because it's so stressful and yeah. We don't want to be in the way and we usually ask for maybe one or two video calls just to be sure like it's like hey we're still counting on you don't worry we're here for you and then yeah. the same right but sometimes when you are um kept in a waiting uh, time frame it's ner it's like you, it makes you feel nervous right and you feel anxious that oh my god what if like i don't get a confirmation today and then on the wedding day they call me and they tell me where are you right so in such occasions when we are not sure then we try to actually bother the couple or the coordinator otherwise we do not go around the coordinator or the the contact person that's good to mention actually that you're saying this yeah. out of respect and you know like it's like we know how to do our job we trust that person that you know that that's the only one that will we be in touch so in such extreme quote unquote cases then yes like you are forced to take that one extra step and actually <laughs> reach out to a person that you're not supposed to it wasn't even a bride and uh, as i remember you didn't even have the name of the bride and the the signature on the contract was actually by the mother so that's why you you looked her up on facebook and then hopefully or um, thankfully she actually confirmed everything so yeah. confirmed she was a real person and yes she wants the wedding to take place yeah uh, so it, sometimes it happens and we don't like this of course but you know just just it's not just like oh my god we would of course we would like to have a wedding in lake como right who doesn't want to have it on a portfolio in a portfolio but also it would have been a shock if you would receive a call while you're in prague mm -hmm. And they'll be like, hey, we're at the lake, where are you, right? So it would be absolutely horrible because they would not be able to find it. And it would be bad for your, like, for the couple, like, the day. Yeah, of course. Like, someone from the, 
guest would have to film it on the phone, I guess. But yeah, for your name and for your work, because it would mean you're not re reliable. But again, it's the communication. Like, you need to communicate all the time. Like, we don't bother people, but you need the crucial information and the conf final confirmation that it's going to take place. So... so that's basically how we managed to score the wedding, right? And uh, actually, practically perfectplanning.com, that's the webpage of the organizer. And she's also on Facebook and uh, we communicated through Facebook, but that's her webpage and people can find her there if you want to uh, elope or something. She's, she's doing a great job and she just had a child, so she was a little bit busy, but I, I saw that she's already planning other wedding destinations for her couple, so that's amazing. So yeah, so before the departure, basically, what, what did I do? What did we arrange? I know I arranged because we had some late arrivals. So we arranged like online and nonstop uh, car pickup, right? You arrive by the, by the plane and you book the car. So they, they have a shuttles. So shuttle, shuttle they, they will pick you up, take you all the way to the car rental and you rent out the car anytime you arrive, basically. And we arrived in Milan. Milan, we flew to Milan. So that was like one hour and 30 minutes from Prague. Yeah, it was great. And we picked up the car, it was pretty quick and like stress-free, right? It was really nice. I will also put the link down below for the company because they're amazing. And the quality of the car, like for the price, I think like two or three days was like 50 euros. And the car was like, looked like brand new, it had amazing equipment, yeah, clean. Not... It was like not old, like 10 year old No, car it was Volkswagen actually, I think, yeah, so, and yeah, it was really nice. And we also like got all our equ equipment ready and I was the main shooter and you were my assistant, right? Yeah, so even though we, uh, so even though we are like a duo, we still or you do sometimes independent work so it's not like if i don't work he doesn't take the job it's that if there's a job then he takes the job so it depends what people need right sometimes they need yeah. just photographer sometimes video yeah sometimes both but when we can i prefer to go as two people especially for the video for b-roll different angles and for photos too actually because you can many times snap different emotions moments and just during the ceremony, you just have another angle and you cover more. So it's nice. But of course, if you have smaller weddings, then two people might be extra and kind of not required for the given wedding. When it's small venue, small amount of people. So one photographer is enough. Yeah, but I would say like that different angle is always still nice, you know, especially when, for example, the bride walks down the aisle and you get the groom, then the other one gets the bride. But yeah, so um, this time they needed only a videographer and I couldn't pass on the chance of going to Lake Como. So, and I, I, I do have like minor experience with the videography. So you've done already one or two weddings with me before. And, and then some other like well, you have the long lens 70 to 200 so you're not in anyone's view of the couple or ceremony or anything and you just snap nice moments right yeah. so i tagged along <laughs> yeah to, why not to... but this time you didn't have the long lens actually you had a gimbal you were running around filming them how they when they walked right filming the venue it was, it was really nice yeah so when uh, we traveled, we arrived in Milan, we picked up the car and then because we had some time before the wedding, uh, did we arrive one day before or it, yeah? So yeah, I think we arrived one day before because we wanted to have spare time, which we always recommend have some extra time. It's about safety. So you arrive, no, if something bad happened, then you would if you like delay of the plane and you would arrive late then the wedding yeah. can be spoiled by you by not being there but yeah and it's also good to arrive early because you can scout out the location which is so important like 
to see how to get there, be there on time, count with traffic, whatever you need, have your gear ready, maybe even if you managed to go to the venue, which we didn't, but we looked around, you will be able to scout out the location for angles and what might be and might not be possible. Because like, for example, you cannot fly a drone everywhere, but here to some certain limit, it was possible and we had the uh, permission from the venue to, to fly there. And yeah, we were ready and set to film the wedding, right? Yeah, especially when it's about drone footage. I think we actually talked about this in the, the one of the first videos about the Greece that because the weather was not good or there was no time to sh the, do the drone footage, then if you have extra time, you actually squeeze in the drone footage from the other day. You know? The Greek wedding, for example, was terrible. Uh, you can watch the video. It was, the wedding was not terrible. <laughs> the weather was terrible, right? I'll, like, and uh, also the day on its own was hectic. Like when it started, like the preparations, then it was hectic, especially for us. So we would not be able to fly the drone, especially with this high, high velocity wind. So I'm glad I flew it in peace the day before. But actually we did something similar here at the Lake Como. The day was overcast with was sometimes sunshine and it was it was a nice day. When it's overcast, you know, you have like softbox, light, evenly spread. So it was nice. But the next day we still stayed there. So the next day we went there again, close to the venue, uh, to the area. And we managed to scout it out again for the possible drone shots. We parked as close as possible. And I actually flew a drone, got some amazing boat shots. Mm -hmm. And we camped there and waited for both to, the till they arrived. Yeah. Like Quick interruption, guys. If you'd like to support us, please make sure that you like our videos, you subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. And if you have anything to add or ask, feel free to comment down below. And we filmed it during basically day and with the sunshine. So a little bit better light, but more like filmic. And then also the island from the outside. So that was great. But on the day of the wedding, actually, after they got married, we walked around, filmed the cinematic shots, and then they had a boat ride in like rustic boat, which was super nice. And uh, uh, the captain, he was really nice, loaded the couple, and he like went on the motorboat like around its circles and whatever he can could for us. The photographer, she actually had a small drone too. I had like more advanced one, of course, cinematic one. And so she she struggled actually with the flying because she didn't have much experience with it. So she couldn't like start it. Then she wasn't sure how to land. So I helped her to catch it and to land it. But why I'm saying it is that it's always good to be ready. Like beforehand, get everything working, ready, and especially familiar, get familiar with your equipment. So you know when something goes bad, why it went bad and how to fix it on the spot. Like for example, for me, it also went a little bit bad because the drone didn't want to fly to certain distance from me because there was some issue with the connection, I think. So I couldn't fly more than 300 meters from me. I couldn't like the, the height was limited, but also the distance from me. So the boat, the ca captain was amazing. He kept like going around and I filmed everything I needed because they didn't go that far from me. But just be ready for things to go bad and adjust accordingly. But also, while I was just saying it, that we managed to film amazing bow shots of the couple. Not only like fake them and uh, put it all together in post from the next day with the sunny weather, but then you combine it and it looks good. And I think no one could tell, really. So we combine good weather and the bad weather and the real couple. Yeah, so, but you were not on the on the boat with the couple, right? On the way back. No, I took the boat with the rest of the guys. Yeah, yeah. So you could basically take some pictures, or uh, take uh, videos of of the party, right? Yeah. Late. Uh, well, the party. not really, because in it was not like the the boat was 
ugly yeah. <laughs> inside. So there was not much. It was to like work a fairy, me. right? Yeah, it was exactly. Yeah. It was a fairy. But I did manage to try, or I did not manage, but I tried to get some shots of the lake, you know, surround like the the right. And now we will show you some videos over yeah. overlaid in the video. And also, we will have a link of the actual yeah. wedding video. Yeah, yeah, because it looks really nice. And actually me with the photographer, we managed to get then on the boat with the couple and we managed to snap some nice footage and pictures because the, we were basically telling them to hug, to lift the bouquet and drink. They had some wine actually on the boat. So that was yeah, really... they usually the, provide. It was like, again, amazing. When we needed some extra shots, he slowed down. Then I remember Bryce, he was like, no, we need to get to the venue as soon as possible. So he stepped on it and it was he was flying. But when we were also taking the picture, he hid, he mm. hid well, like, they know. They yeah, but, but it's still so humanly approached, you yeah. know, like so nice because they understand. It's like when you have the officiate of the wedding, now you make is the bride. And when they stand there, they like, <laughs> and they watch how they kiss Third and they're kissing and he's standing there you're trying to get the, the shot of them and there's a third person watching them so it's amazing when they know and now you make his the bride and they ditch out of there right they're like oh i'm out of here and and then you can get pure shot for example here it was they, they kissed and there was the view of the lake common so yeah that was amazing. Um, I think it would be nice also, okay, so we're jumping around. So we say that we flew into um, Milan, we took the car, then we actually arrived a night before of yeah. the wedding. So we drove around one hour to the little town. I think it was actually the Como, the town was called Como, which is the start of the lake itself. That's where we had the accommodation. We didn't book close to the... Uh, Bellagio, which is the famous port city in the Como Lake. Um, we didn't book any accommodation there. We actually stayed in the beginning of the lake. I don't know why we just decided. Well, this was kind of on the side and we knew we will have time. It was cheap also, I think. We stay, yes, because it's Lake Como. It's quite expensive to have a nice accommodation. So uh, when when we arrived the next morning to Bellagio already with like full gear and everything, we actually um, had to figure out how to park there, right? Yeah. Because it's a it, it it's a historical town. You kind of cannot drive inside the car in majority of the streets and also you couldn't park so that's another reason why you have to be early yeah. uh, just to make sure that you are not late for silly reasons like parking or rush hour which also happens there because the roads are so narrow so that that's important and also there was the issue with the boat with the couple itself so that crunched the time even like much more for us because the boat was late. So the ceremony, we got into the, the villa itself, which is only accessible by boat. So we got there like minutes before they had it rented because as you mentioned in the beginning, you can rent Villa Bal Balbier uh, Melo. Melo only for, well, you can rent it for the whole day, but the couple, our couple had rented only for I think uh, around one hour, up to one hour, which is more than enough for... Um, okay, so one, one note. You do not rent the entire villa in this case. You actually rent the place where the ceremony takes place. So when you rent it, that means that people close down the area just for the ceremony because it's a touristy place. So, of course, you don't want to have random people attending your wedding so that's that's when you hire uh, or rent the place but afterwards you can already just go around in the gardens and do the photo shoot and video shoot right there is no time limitation it was just the time was uh, ticking because of the pickup of the boat right so now question so I was assigned to do like the establishing shots, right? Like the venue itself or the surroundings where you will actually doing 
the video shoot with the couple. So do you know the backstory of why the couple took this uh, venue? Do you remember? Oh yeah, yeah. well, uh, I remember bride asked him, mm -hmm. the groom, whether he would like to get married in some like destination. And I remember that he had only one like wish and that would be like the Star Wars mm -hmm. villa because he loved Star Wars. So that's why they went for this one. And we got some shots like Anakin Skywalker. So I think we made his dream come true. I hope at least. Yeah. So that was a nice story. It was actually his pick. And she went with it because, you know, she loves him and she, I'm sure she loved the venue too. But for him, it had maybe even more special meaning. I think it was a kind of double because every girl or a lot of girls dream of having this like fairy tale. Yeah. And the, the venue is gorgeous. Yeah. That the, the, the view and mm -hmm. all, all the interior, the gardens are just so beautiful. So yeah, I think that was a win-win for both of them. Yes, absolutely. And it was like really nice wedding. Then we walked around, as you said, we went downstairs where the huge tree is and those are really cinematic shots and really nice and that's also like straight from the movie it just looks like it plus they were dressed she was in wedding dress he had really nice tags so it looked really nice and yeah then we packed it up you went on no ferry i went on the boat with them shot some drone shots and they actually invited us for a dinner which was super nice like they were so inviting and so nice and basically we went to shoot a few shots around when we were waiting for the dinner but the dinner was in a restaurant and we we didn't have anything to do like we were done with work so we didn't really have to be there for anything but they were so nice and they invited us to stay with them and like chat and we were kind of like part of the family and we also tried like some shots still to get and have as a memory and to share with them but we didn't have to, we were kind of done with work and they just we talked to them we got to know them and we enjoyed dinner with them which is super sweet and really nice yeah that was really fun yeah yeah absolutely the whole family and we were actually sitting with the the mother of the the bride yeah. and the brother and then we found out actually that that i told her like we had no communication and i wasn't sure this is going to happen she was like really oh my god that's terrible and yeah it was a funny funny to get to know her this way like that it's actually her who uh, i was in touch with the lady who signed the contract and finally saved, saved the thing yes uh, they were really nice like uh, i would uh, take um uh, their wedding uh, in a heartbeat you know any one of them they were so nice absolutely definitely so yeah so don't forget guys the communication <laughs> is so important just be in touch like it doesn't have to be long email text message whatever just communicate what you want details wishes yeah. and get it done and that's for the couples but also for the creators just try to communicate even when you're trying to score a wedding just communicate through emails until you get a reply either yes or no but just communicate because as we know now it's so common to even when you're talking to someone already through emails they they ghost you and you never know why like d did they find someone yes it's okay if you found someone but it's so nice to let you at least know so you don't book the date because we already talked for example about the dates so ghosting okay is fine but it would be nice to have the reply like no we don't want you we found someone else or something but actually i managed to get like two times replies like they found someone else so and then i wanted a feedback so i asked them like okay and can you tell me what i can do better so next time i can provide better service and sometimes they they say like uh we found someone cheaper or someone who can provide more for the same price and i was like okay and i also wanted to know details so i can adjust you know but sometimes oh that was actually one case when this happened 
and I was like, okay, no problem. And I sent her the links again. It looked like she never looked at the my work, right? The portfolio. And then she started and it looked again like she will she would be interested in my services. It was a wedding in San Francisco. So it looked like hopeful, I would say. And then again, ghosted. But she wanted to know a price again. What do we do? And if we're local, but I said we will be traveling in that area. But yeah, just ghosting is super common now. And just reply. It's really nice to get a reply, either p positive or negative. Like even negative is better than nothing, right? Mm. So. But to be honest, I would say a lot of brides are searching for people for two years like in advance right so they don't really want to rush into booking someone and the reason sometimes when they don't reply is that they're actually searching or looking at other options but it's okay to tell us that you know like thank you well or whatever like we see your work it's amazing we will get back to you because we are looking for other people we're yeah. looking at other people's work too which obviously we know right so it's nice so we don't think like oh my god okay so i will book this date this far ahead which we try not to book too far ahead because it might not really work out but but if you sign a contract but these actually were upcoming weddings this year still so yeah. they just wanted to know and then ghosted so so the communication is super important if you're trying to find photographers or videographers you can really find great ones and for a good price in facebook groups or web pages but that's actually going through the facebook groups and then just communicate it's super important communication so facebook groups are great for people getting married and for the creators i think you can connect there and find plenty of work just the thing is that ghosting is now a thing yeah. i would say <laughs> yeah and uh regarding the communication still once you get in touch with someone through this facebook group or even the web pages it would be it's it's recommended to jump on the call just get to know the person better through video call that's the best like Try to arrange it as soon as possible. Talk about your wishes, how you picture the wedding, what you would like to do, what must be in the photos, videos. It's super important again to discuss everything and then also a price. Like if it's all this, all my wishes, if you can do it for this price. Because I remember, actually, I just remember the one future bride. She's getting married in a northern italy again it's some villa it was like a nice place but we even jumped on a call we discussed it for like one hour she asked like everything about me my work what i do uh, how long i've been doing this all my equipment she wanted to know almost everything even like i was surprised she might have even asked for my social security number but it was ridiculous but like I, accept, I understand she wanted to know who will be at her wedding, right? But then she started to talk about she wanted a hardcore discount for like full day of video shoot. And that was like below my price. And it was a little bit fishy because like she kept trying to push the price down by different things. Like, okay, so if you if we do it like this then you can deduct it from your taxes and if i give you cash it can be even cheaper and i was like uh no I, I don't do these things under the table and i still need to do taxes so i cannot really give you a discount and so after like two calls and plenty of messages ex exchanged i just told her like my limit that i will not go under because she wanted like full video, wedding video, I think, which would be like around 30 minutes, plus trailers, something on social media, drone shots, which I, I don't know if they're even possible there because of the regulations. And for the price, I think she offered like maybe 
2,000 euros and then wanted 1,500 if it was cash. I was like, no. So like have your limit, price, of course, have your budget and but expect also the quality, you know, because price reflects the quality usually and creators have your limits like don't take any job just think about if it's feasible for you and then you can accept the job and this also looked a little bit fishy oh and the last detail i forgot to mention really in this was that she at the end when we she already pushed the price all the way down she said that she doesn't want anything to be published like i will not be able to use it in my portfolio which is normal, like it's totally fine. You can put it in a contract, but usually this increases the price, right? Because you respect it, you, it's totally normal, but you cannot use it as your promotion. So you have to increase the price, but she, she totally said like, it's, that's not normal and she will not do it. So we parted our ways. I haven't heard about her since, but. I think we dodge the bullets because sometimes if you agree to work that doesn't look f really well for you and you already are hurt a little bit by the price then it would not be good fit i think it's also important to fit right with the person like you feel good already on a talk which you click you click with people and then everything is smoother and nicer yeah so most of the times and so yeah we wanted to talk about the communication how to basically acquire jobs like this uh also scouting of the location super important uh, what i forgot to say is as a tip for creators and for brides inform your creators videographers photographers about the program of the day so they know the itinerary and they know where to be not to miss the moments and what to do basically like well usually coordinators are the ones who arrange such, such things but but if the bride is doing it herself then yeah but absolutely so know the program uh have plenty of time reserve be safe on the way on, on the way when you travel like car driving sometimes the roads are super narrow sometimes you drive on the other side it can happen so be careful and just be mindful when you work to your to the guests and family and the couple so you don't intrude their space and you still allow everyone to enjoy the wedding while you they, you capture their best moments right and my last tip would be to over deliver once you once you're working always try to deliver more of a value than what was agreed on so do something extra. It always makes them happier and they will appreciate it. Right? Okay. <laughs> All right. I think that would, that would be it from Lake Como experience. Would you add something? I think so. Most of the experience. And did you enjoy it actually? The, going to Lake Como and shooting as a, a second shooter? <laughs> Uh, yes, absolutely. It's way less stressful, I have to say. I was feeling like I had more, more time than you did. So it's well, plus, I also actually enjoyed doing video uh, with the limited abilities I have, whatever I can. But it's nice, yeah. Uh, it's le less stressful, I have to say, and not used to it if I'm involved in wedding usually. Of, as a photographer that means that i share the stress with the videographer but that was that was nice yeah and was, it helped the, the couple and the family wasn't yeah absolutely yeah. That, that's such a big uh plus mm -hmm. uh, to everything and also of course the whole area it's just beautiful so and then the we spent a nice day afterwards because the weather was better and we actually got that's yeah so Shot. Yeah. yeah so if you would like to know something more about us and learn how we started and who we are you can watch the first video first podcast that we did and if you want to also start a business get into a wedding business as a creator 
then you can watch also our other podcast. Yes. And if anyone has had a experience at a wedding like uh, at a como like como you can leave a comment maybe share your story as a a, content, uh, as a creator or a bride or anything we would like to actually hear some stories so it's not so one-sided so we have some communication with you guys too absolutely so i'll see you later guys bye bye bye